This review is brought to you by the Indie Game Collective, connecting indie game developers and publishers with indie game content creators worldwide. It looks weird and has a bit of a strange title, but also has so much more to offer than what any marketing material prepared me for. As always, my name is V and here is my review for Non The First War. Okay, so full disclosure, I kind of hesitated a bit to play this one. Not because the artwork sent out or anything, that usually doesn't deter me too much because let's be real, I'll play just about anything no matter how good or bad it looks. But I was hesitant because the Steam page for this game is painfully empty. There is no discussion, no artwork, no news, no guides. I get a little nervous when games like this come my way because most of the time it means that either the game is unfinished or the developers gave up on it. After playing the game, I'm not so sure either is the case. It might honestly come down to the fact that one single person created this entire game by himself and possibly just didn't have the energy or time to complete a fancy looking Steam profile. But I'd like to take this moment to assure you that while you will find very little on this game out in the indie gaming world, it's one that you'll want to check out. Normally I wouldn't start a review out with a recommendation to play, but I wanted to make sure that no matter what might be said in this review, you all know that it was a rather unexpectedly fun experience to play this game. In Non the First Warp, you play as Non, a lone alien on his home planet whose job is simply to collect and deliver packages to his customers. With a reputation uphold, there's no package he won't deliver, even if it is something that, you know, can break the entire time continuum and change the universe as we know it. Such a package is of course what he ends up getting his hands on after a small asteroid flies into his front yard, leaving a crater and a locked metal box inside. After finally finding a way to open it, he is set on an adventure through countless portals and even more timelines as he tries to figure out what's going on and, more importantly, how to get back home. He eventually learns that a small mix-up has caused the shift, resulting in countless copies of Non to be all stuck in the same timeline. With the ability to rewind and fast forward time itself, he'll need to fix the error that caused him to open up the box in the first place before everything can go back to its rightful place within the universe. Sounds exciting, right? Not quite what you would expect from the game trailer. To make things even better, it's a point and click adventure! Not only do you get to solve an intergalactic mystery, but you also get to click on every tiny little object in the game and be rewarded with some well-written and beautifully sarcastic dialogue, which of course is a staple in games like this. As with most, if not all point and click games, you'll have to solve puzzles to progress. But if you're not one for the thinkering or putting bananas in the tailpipes, you can rest assured that none of the puzzles in non are too terribly difficult. And if you happen to lose your way or get stuck, there's an incredibly helpful in-game hint system that will swiftly point you in the right direction so you can continue along with your space adventure. It's very player friendly and makes for some good pacing throughout the game. Now, with that being said, Non is not without a few misses here and there regarding the actual gameplay. While for the most part the controls are pretty responsive and everything moves along as what I'm assuming is intended, there will be times where it kind of just doesn't. There were a few instances where an icon appeared letting me know I can interact with an item just to have Non stand there next to it not really doing anything. It usually takes a few clicks for the game to register what you want and other times if you move a little to the left or a little to the right, the icon will actually disappear, pushing you into confusion about whether or not that item was actually supposed to be picked up or not. Though I can confirm that each time this happened while playing, I did not, in fact, need the item in question. There's also a small bug that happens where items in your inventory will overlap each other, making it impossible to select one over the other. This can be fixed simply by exiting the game and jumping back into it by hitting continue, but as with most glitches like this in games, it's not something the player should really have to worry about fixing themselves. It's a bug that shouldn't really exist to begin with. On the topic of inventories, this game has an awful lot of things to pick up. So the fact that it doesn't include an inventory that you can open and close kind of doesn't make sense with me. 
Having everything on your screen at all times makes picking and choosing easier, yes, but when you start to get into the later levels and end up having a plethora of items in your inventory, the bar they sit on can become intrusive as the items take up a pretty good chunk of the screen. I don't want to call it an eyesore, but for lack of a better term, that's what we're going to go with for this. While these are all small issues in the grand scale of it all, especially since there's a chance you might not even run into them, my biggest WTF moment came with the entirety of Chapter 3, or more so the lack of Chapter 3, I guess. Mind you, I feel a little silly even mentioning this, but I still haven't really let it go after giving it a few days to settle in. All of the other chapters had you digging through every box and trying to combine tires with sticks and glass and pens and wires. But for some strange reason, chapter three is the only one that just kind of, it's kind of non-existent. I don't know how else to really describe it. After completing chapter two and getting the hang of what the game was asking me to do, I was well prepared to spend some time in chapter three, but instead you get one puzzle that can be done in a matter of minutes, if that, and then it's just done. I honestly thought I broke the game at first and ended the chapter sooner than it was supposed to, but nope, that's what is supposed to happen. It's the one single part of the game that just felt more like an afterthought than an actual contribution to anything within the story itself. So if you plan on checking this out, just be prepared for a minute of confusion as you ask yourself, was that it? Because yeah, that's that's it. That That is chapter three. While Non the First Warp isn't the fanciest looking game out there, the story drives it enough to get you to look past the graphics and enjoy the game for what it has to offer. I know I mentioned earlier that this game was made by one single person, but I had no idea that it was until the credits started to roll. I honestly thought a small group of people collectively worked on this game, but to see it was just one single person makes me appreciate the overall effort even more. I'm a huge fan of weird looking games and anything odd and strange. So of course, this was right up my alley. And yeah, there's a chance I'm being a bit biased with my take on the overall look of the game, but at the same time, you're dealing with aliens and far off planets. You're not exactly going to find pretty out in space. The artwork fits with the story and overall atmosphere, so I have to give the developer credit for what he was able to create for this game. Overall, I admittedly kind of actually feel bad that I hesitated to play this game. Not having much marketing material to go off of and very little information on the game itself, I learned a pretty good lesson about judging games prior to playing them. Non the First Warp is a silly game, but it's a silly game that doesn't really try to be something it's not. It's a straightforward point and click game that humors you with an unexpectedly enjoyable story. If this is the developer's first game published, I honestly look forward to seeing what they do next as this is a fantastic starting point for any indie developer. I started the game expecting the worst and it ended up being one of the better games I've played this month, which is saying quite a bit. I still have a handful of Steam achievements to unlock and I honestly look forward to going back into the game to try to figure out how to get them. At the end of the day, I gave Non the First Warp a 6.5 out of 10, the pros being that it has a fantastic story and really well written dialogue that will have you smiling ear to ear throughout most of the game. It has very player friendly game mechanics that help with the pacing of the game and also helps prevent anyone from feeling a little lackluster in the brains department. I love abstract game art and this was no exception. Give me weird or give me death. I loved the art in this game. The two cons I found in the game were that a few game mechanic glitches caused a bit of confusion here and there and having to restart the game app to fix the inventory glitch was a little on the unfavorable side. And of course, whatever happened with chapter three, I still don't know. I'm still confused. It was there. I, I played something. I, I solved a puzzle. But yeah, compared to everything else in the game, that was just such a little bit of a letdown in regards to an entire chapter just being one very, very small puzzle. That'll just about wrap up this review for Non the First Warp. Again, my name is V and thank you all for listening in. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more indie gaming content.